What's going on guys? Hope you're having a good day and I hope you're having a good week as always. I want to talk about two stories today. Kanye West logged back into Twitter and he's been going off about the music industry and such. He says some pretty important things about uh, contracts that I want to talk about, not just from a music industry perspective, but also uh, just from a contracts perspective, because whether you guys know it or not, you're probably signing a bunch of contracts with Apple and other tech companies that you probably never even read. So he brought up some pretty interesting stuff. I want to talk about it. Second thing I want to talk about, or I might flip flop and do this one first, is uh, Joe Rogan. If you guys don't know, he's got one of the most successful podcasts in the world. He's also a UFC announcer and a comedian. He moved over to Spotify over, excuse me, I sounded over, I sounded like I was Canadian. He moved over to Spotify with like some sort of $100 million deal. And since then, a lot of right wing podcasts were mysteriously evaporated from the Spotify playlist. And he had to apologize for making a comment about Portland. I just want to talk about that real quick. What's going on? And if we're really fighting censorship, a lot of the people, I've talked about it here on the stream last couple of times, but a lot of the people on the front lines of fighting censorship and political correctness like Joe Rogan, they're not really fighting it. I mean, I don't know. If you take a deal and let them delete a bunch of podcasts of people for having a certain political perspective, and then you apologize a week later, uh, you know, for saying something else, I'm going to get into it. You know, I don't want to throw stones per se, but I do want to have an honest conversation about it and be as respectful and fair as I can be. And we'll wait for people to get in. What's up, Brandon? What's up, everybody? We'll do some shout outs and I'll post this to the top. Hold on one second. These are my hats and my shirts. So if you want a hat like this, I understand they say normally it's backwards. You can see it, the stitching through there made in the USA. You get it. If all fails, I'm going to just be a hat salesman. I'm going to stop making music and just sell hats on the corner. So if you see me on the corner with this hat on, I'm a, new, I'm a hat salesman. And if, you see me, and if you see me with this on, that means I'm fighting the coronavirus way more effectively than you. So if you see me in this, I'm fighting the corona. So I take it very, very seriously, folks. I, I, I take it so seriously I haven't worn a mask in months. I wear this thing. And I haven't been sick since, so it's been working out here. Let me, get, let me get my hat back on. I'm not selling the helmets, but I am selling these hats. So I said, leave Joe Rogan be. He's the man. How come every time people get mad at me, they don't spell anything right? I don't care that you spell right, but it's like, leave Joe. You spell Joe Rogan with a P. I'm, you don't even know what I'm going to say yet. It's like, I didn't even speak about it yet. And you're like, leave, leave him alone. What if I'm here to defend him? What if I'm here to say he's completely innocent? The media is just harassing him for no reason. You don't even know. You don't even know what this is about to be about. So let's just let's let's calm. Let's calm it down, folks. And if we can't calm down. It is what it is. I don't really care. Lisa, what's up? It says God bless. I'm sorry. You can see, you can see the stitching through there. I get it. It's backwards. It's mirrored anomaly mirrored. I'm sorry, folks. This is a live stream. This is the life I have to put up with. It's backwards for me and, and, and for you. It's okay. Shake it off. Let's shake it off. Like Taylor Swift said, shake it off, shake it off. Oh, okay. That's enough. What's up, Joe? Angela said, I can't stand Joe Rogan. All right. We got some Joe Rogan fans in the house. We got some Joe Rogan haters in the house. This is what happens if, you, if you're successful. Some people love you. Some people hate you. You can't, you can't shake it off. But it's okay. I'm going to sip on my coffee for like 30 more seconds. The hat, where can you get? You can get the hat at dreamrare.com or godblesshats.com, my website. You can get the helmet. I mean, you can get it online. You can find it on Amazon. But I'm not, I'm not out here trying to do ads for Jeff Bezos, but that's where I found mine. I'm just being honest. I can't sit here. All right. Let's start with the Rogan thing real quick, and then we'll move on to the Kanye thing. The Kanye thing's actually deeper than people think a lot of, everybody you know has an opinion about Kanye he actually pretty funny he peed on his Grammy I, I would say find the video but it's kind of gross to watch but he he barely uses Twitter and Kanye starts going off about the music industry he starts outing like you know CEOs and stuff or high-level finance people in 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 uh, music and then he uploads a, a, a video of him throwing his Grammy in the toilet and peeing on his Grammy. It's pretty funny. It's disgusting to watch, but it's pretty funny that he peed on the Grammy. He's like, you think I'm joking? I'm gonna pee on the Grammy. I personally love it. Obviously people, you know, people are mixed about Kanye too, but I, I find it quite entertaining. We'll talk about that second though. I just had to say he peed on his Grammy. Very, very funny. Um, 
I almost lost my train of thought. It's so funny. But the only thing funnier I saw this week was a uh, Trump tweeted uh, a, a doctored video of Joe Biden like playing NWA off his phone. It was like F the police, and then it said the N word. Th these things you can't make up, guys. This is a crazy time. Trump and Kanye are just so funny to me, but everybody gets so mad. And then I start tweeting and they say, Anomaly is so mad. I'm like, you, you wouldn't believe how much fun I'm having, but whatever. So Joe Rogan, he took a, a big Spotify deal. God bless him. He got a lot of money and rightfully so. He has a big podcast to move over to Spotify. So very early on, people were speculating what was going on because when he moved his podcast over to Spotify, all of a sudden, all these right-wing and controversial podcast just started mysteriously disappearing. It was Alex Jones, who was maybe the funniest and most uh, successful podcast Joe's ever had. It might be the biggest podcast ever. It's really funny and really interesting. But uh, Spotify got rid of the Alex Jones podcast. Then Spotify, it looked like they got rid of the Milo Yiannopoulos podcast. Then it looked like Spotify got rid of the Gavin McGinnis podcast. Then it looked like Spotify got rid of the Owen Benjamin podcast. Then it looked like Spotify got rid of the uh, Chris D'Elia podcast, who's not right wing, but he had some controversy recently and got himself into some trouble. So mysteriously, all the controversial guests, most of which are right wing, I think there were a few other ones, are mysteriously not on the Spotify podcast. I said early on, you know, I don't like to throw stones, but to me, I'm like, it's clear, it's clearly censorship. It's clearly Spotify gave Joe the money and then said at a certain point, hey, Joe, we don't like, these people are too edgy for Spotify. Let's get rid of them. And either Joe said yes, or he doesn't care enough to address it, which he probably should because everybody that follows him believes in anti-censorship. A lot of people believe in non-political correctness. So you take the money, all these people disappear, disappear from your podcast. And then people were yelling at me two weeks ago and they're saying, Anomaly, it was just an error. It was, it was Joe's favorite episodes that didn't make it. He's just holding them off. I'm like, Joe's favorite episodes are two podcasts with Owen Benjamin? That doesn't make sense to me. But also, it's just too coincidental. It's like all the right-wingers and all the edgy people who have been banished from the media um, are the ones that are missing. Okay. So I noticed that, I, I spoke about it, you know, and I'm like, this is a little crazy, but whatever, let's just let them censor. And then, you know, today he had to apologize uh, because he said that left-wingers in Portland were starting fires on his podcast, the media came at him, and then he apologized. And I think maybe he spoke about the arson in Portland as far as the fires with more, you know, uh, enthusiasm than what he knew and he's apologizing for that and I understand if you did make a mistake say hey I didn't mean to I'm sorry but this is my issue with Joe as much as I like him I've actually met him I think he does great work I'm very fair and kind to him as, as I possibly can be but this is a pattern that people really hate to see in this country and I just have to call it for what it is you have Joe Rogan who's a proud progressive he loves Bernie Sanders he you know is fair to Trump but he also is not a huge fan of Trump so he's progressive, he believes in progressive policies, he loves universal health care, he argues with Ben Shapiro about how much better progressive is than conservative. He takes a left-wing stance, even though he's the most reasonable leftist. Left-wing policies, like the ones that Joe Rogan supports, destroy Los Angeles, Joe Rogan, and my home city. So crime is on the rise, trash is everywhere, tents are everywhere, and it just becomes disgusting, not because of population, I'm gonna get into that in a second, because of Democrat policies, because of bad leadership. There could be a Democrat who could run the city. Eric Garcetti is not that. Jerry Brown and Newsom are not that for the state. So it's not the population, uh, it's the city, it's the politics, it's the politicians, it's the Democrats. So Joe takes his progressive po policies and progressive ideologies and his multi-hundred million dollar deal down to Texas so he could probably save some tax money, maybe, maybe not, maybe just to get away from Los Angeles because it's coming, uh, becoming a third world country. And then he goes on and talks to, 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 to Shapiro and he tries to say, I know he, he explained himself a little bit, but he tries to say, well, I'm leaving Los Angeles because the population is just too high. There's too many people. It's not too many people, Joe. If you're gonna leave a progressive third world country area that got destroyed because of Democrats and liberals, just be honest about it when you take your politics to Texas. This is what everyone hates. Tokyo has two times the population of Los Angeles. Tokyo is cleaner, it's safer, its streets are cleaner, its uh, citizens know how to act, and they don't uh, act like degenerates. 
So it has nothing to do with population size. It has everything to do with Democrats. It has everything to do with the leadership. It has everything to do with the people who live there and then the people who run the people who live there into the ground. So this is my problem with Joe. I, I always have love, I always have respect, but it's like you have progressive policies, you leave a progressive policy area to go to a conservative uh, state and then you make an excuse and lie about why the place you left was actually bad. It was the Democrats. It wasn't the population. Then you have Spotify cut out all these right wingers, Gavin, McG Gavin McGinnis, Milo Yiannopoulos, Alex Jones, all these people. And then you apologize to the media for making a mistake about Portland, which isn't really a mistake. It's more of like a hypothesis. It's like, who's lighting these fires? It's okay to speculate, be like, well, I just watched left-wingers light fires on a, on a courthouse for 60 days straight. I just watched them light Starbucks on fire. I just watched them brag about lighting stuff on fire. I just watched a Black Lives Matter official go on television and say, we're gonna burn it to the ground if you don't give us what I want. So it's okay for Joe to speculate that maybe the fires in Portland are coming from the left wing because most people with a brain and common sense would be like, well, since they're lighting everything else on fire, maybe they could be the arsons behind this too. Maybe not. So Joe says that and he apologizes to the media. But my big point is I like Joe. I like him as a comedian. I like him as a human being. But you take the big corporate money, let them censor right wingers, leave a left wing area, go to a right wing state, go to a red state, bring your progressive policies with it, censor the right wingers who have the policies that actually keep you safe, that you want to live in their state, and then you make excuses for why you left Los Angeles and said, oh, it's just the population. No, it's the policy. It's the people. It's the politicians. That's what it is. It's your ideology that doesn't work. Progressivism, the word progressive is right out of the Communist Manifesto. It's also a word that means to progress. It's, it's, it's the name of an insurance company too. But all his like ideas of, well, we should have free education. We should have universal health care. In theory, they don't work because you're giving the government all the power. Karl Marx wanted complete control of communication. He wanted complete control of agriculture. He wanted complete, complete control of the media. And it's never worked historically for that reason. So when he goes and argues against Ben Shapiro or some of these other conservatives, says, well, I believe in this. Well, my feelings say this. Well, your feelings say that your feelings want to give all the power to the government, which is what's happening in California. The government has too much power. Eric Garcetti has too much power. Gavin Newsom has too much power. He takes it away from the workers. He takes your tax money away. He takes your freedom away. He takes your ability to defend yourself. You're better off being a criminal than you are somebody shooting a criminal that's in your house or in your bar. And then you go and go to Texas because you know this is unsustainable. These ideas, these policies, these people, these liberals, these progressives, you can't live there because of that. There's trash homelessness and tents because of that. And then you take your operation out to Texas, a red state, because it's better, and then push your policies and allow Spotify to censor right-wingers, lie about it, say, oh, we just made a mistake or it's some sort of copying error. It's not a copying error. It's not a digital error. I don't know what excuse he made. I didn't fully you know, catch the whole thing, but I saw that he told Alex Jones and said, oh, no, we, we, we're going to save those podcasts for later. You're saving the Alex Jones, Milo Yiannopoulos, and all these right-wingers, Gavin McGinnis, Chris D'Elia, Owen Ben. They're not saving them. They deleted them because those people were deemed too controversial for Spotify. Obviously, what they just randomly picked like seven of the most controversial people to delete and hold for a special. No, they're holding it to hold it forever because they don't want to put it on Spotify because that's what corporate media does. So this is my problem. It's like, bro, you're bowing down to left wing media. You're bowing down to left wing corporations. You're taking your left wing agenda to Texas apologizing to them while making excuses and not apologizing to the right-wingers who, one, you just moved to their state because you know it's better and, and more uh, prosperous, but two, uh, you know, do the opposite. So that's, that's my big problem. Of course, Joe's great. His podcast's awesome, but it's like, dude, if you're going to go to Texas, don't, don't take your progressive policy, censor right-wingers, say it's the population for why you left when it's not the population size. It's like, just keep it real. And he deserves to get ratioed until he explains himself why he did that. So if you go to his Instagram, a lot of people are ratioing him, which means more comments and more up likes on things like, yo, what happened to Alex? What are you doing? He deserves to get ratioed until he responds. And, and I'm not saying this in a mean way. Don't harass him personally. But when Joe Rogan had on, uh, you know, the, the, the CEO of Twitter, Jack Dorsey, his name was, he did a horrible softball interview because 
to be honest, it just was bad. And Square, who Jack Dorsey owns, was a sponsor of the podcast. So Joe gave his sponsor, Jack Dorsey, a softball interview. Everybody complained. Everybody ratioed Joe Rogan. He got more downvotes than upvotes. And then Joe Rogan had a second one with Tim Pool on and the other lady uh, from, Spotify, from, t from Twitter. So this is America's version. This is your free speech right to ratio and show people your disapproval of their lies. So then they correct themselves. And Joe's really great, like a Trump, at correcting himself. If you bring the truth to, tr to Trump, Trump usually corrects himself. If you bring the truth massively to Rogan, Rogan usually usually corrects himself because he, he, he has a good scope of what's going on. So I'm not here hating on him. This is nothing personal. This is everything. Bro, I lived in Los Angeles just like you lived in Los Angeles. It's a total shithole third world country that's becoming unlivable because of Democrats, because of liber liberals, because of their policy, because they're too weak, because they're too fake, because they're incapable of solving everything. So you shouldn't be bowing down to left-wing media when you move to a red state. You shouldn't bring your progressive policies to that state and you certainly shouldn't allow Spotify to censor right-wing people because eventually they're gonna censor you and your money's gonna go away. But even if it's not all about the money, I don't care. It's like people are like, you'd take the deal too. I really wouldn't, especially if I was already that wealthy, but I would not take a $100 million deal to censor 10 people that I knew shouldn't be censored because this is how the media operates. Well, they're too crazy, but this is okay. This is not okay. They're not too crazy. You're crazy. Don Lemon's crazy, Anderson Cooper's crazy, but they're the right kind of crazy, so they're allowed to act like they have the moral high ground. They don't have the moral high ground, and this is why we lose in this country, because everybody's too big of a coward to do something about it. So that's all I'm trying to say, and it's like our, if our thought leaders and our free speech anti-PC warriors aren't free speech anti-PC warriors, we're never gonna make any traction. So we have to use our power to do good, not use our power to take a $100 million deal, censor right-wingers, move to a red state, and then apologize to liberals for saying what everybody's thinking, which is that Portland is getting set on fire. Give me a break. This, this, this cancel culture uh, you know, hypocrisy needs to end. And I like Joe, but it's like, dude, once again, before I move on, um, Los Angeles is not getting worse because of population size. There's plenty of cities on the planet that are way more populated and way better run. It's not the population, it's the people, it's the politician, it's the politics, it's the progressives, it's the liberals, it's the people who think the policies that Joe Rogan thinks work. They don't work for a reason. I'd love to talk about it, but if not, you could watch Shapiro talk to Rogan about it. They did a good episode, and to be honest, right wing versus left wing, it was very basic, and Shapiro said, this is what's happening, and Rogan said, well, this is how I feel. I feel like this. We get it, Joe. You feel like it's a good idea to give all the power to the government and to give all the health industry to the government. We get that you feel that way, but they felt that way in, in, in California, and California's going to shit because of it. So now that you've fled California, do not bring these policies and these failed political ideas and these feelings and these lies and this bowing down to left-wingers while censoring right-wingers. Don't bring that to Texas. Don't mess with Texas. God bless you, Joe, and God bless Texas. Second thing I want to talk about is Kanye West. So I told you earlier, Kanye West um, peed on his Grammy. He started talking all this stuff about you know his contract, this and that. And I want to say one, before I talk about all that, the most important thing that I think Kanye West said is he said that we need in this era, we need to reestablish, hold on, I might sneeze, hold on, Corona. Sorry, I thought I had some Corona coming up. I had to sneeze it out before I got sick. But um, Kanye said we need in the modern era, we need smaller and shorter contracts. They're bombarding us with major contracts. He was talking about the music industry, but also... You could say to Kanye, because I would say, I didn't sign a deal. I had a deal in when I was 19 where a big label and a big executive wanted to sign me to a two-way deal where they were my management and my label. Uh, they were taking 85% when I was 19 years old. They wanted to take 80, 85%. I thought to myself, I'm only going to get 15%. So I, I didn't sign the deal. So in some ways, self-accountability and self-responsibility, it's like you didn't have to sign the deal. You wanted to be famous like Taylor Swift. You wanted the money, so you signed the deal. I didn't sign the deal. It took me 10 extra years to get to where I'm at because I didn't sign the deal. If I would have signed it when I was 19, I probably could have been more famous and less rich because they were taking 85% of it. So part of it is self-responsibility, but also 
Uh, you know, I do think when he says that contracts should be shorter, you could say, well, Kanye, you should read your contract, blah, blah, blah. But also, how many contracts have you signed that you've never read? Every time you update Apple, you sign a contract. Every time you open iTunes or you sign, you sign up to iTunes, you sign a contract. Every time you, you make a Google account, you sign a contract. Every time you, you, you make a Facebook account, you sign a contract. Have you ever read the contract? No. Have I ever read the contract? No, I don't, I don't have time to go through 100 things, but that's insane that you would even sign that. So my thing is 20 years ago, nobody would sign a contract that they haven't read. Now they've conned our entire culture into signing contracts that we've never read. So when all this stuff's going on, they can't do this, they can't do this. They probably can, because we all signed the contract that we never read. So one of the most revolutionary things that Kanye said that nobody's talking about, because they always miss the gems, they always just go to the thing they hate the most, is we need shorter contracts. We need contracts that make sense. We can't be signing hundred and thousand page contracts, whether it be musicians, entertainers, anybody, tech companies, we should get them, we should negotiate with the people, down to getting things that we can read that make sense. I always say this, someone said I didn't sell my soul, I did not, that's why I'm here, able to speak my truth, or the truth, there's no such thing as my truth. They all say, I'm speaking my truth. There's no such thing as my truth. Either it's the truth or it's not the truth, or you're speculating or not, there's no my truth. But anyway, I'm able to speak the truth, but we need to negotiate contracts down to a few lines that we can understand. When it comes to my own business in general, uh, I always say this, like I've gotten, I've been wit witty enough or maybe uh, curious, I don't know the right word, uh, c concerned enough since I was 19 and getting these record contracts, I always read it myself. I never had a lawyer. I didn't have money for a lawyer. I didn't have family who were lawyers. No one helped me. So I learned how to read contracts and I would always say this to the record label. I'd say, I, I don't, this says way too much. And they're like, no, it doesn't mean that. And I'm like, no, it does mean that. I don't need to be a lawyer to tell what this says. Don't put it in there. I don't agree with this. So I, 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 from a young age, was able to negotiate my own contracts and run away from contracts that I'm like 10%, 15%, zero chance. I'm not signing this. But that's what we have to do. Sometimes people give me a five-page contract. What's all this? What are we doing? You know, I'm starting a business with my, my friend to sell United States products and get everybody to buy products in the United States coming soon. We're not doing a 30-page contract because we don't need 30 pages... You own this, you own this, I own this, and it is what it is. We don't, all of these big contracts are a trap. So I like that Kanye said that and he's bringing that consciousness to the people. We can't, in the future, be signing thousand page contracts with Apple. We, artists can't be signing hundred page contracts, thousand page contracts with record labels where your kids are gonna be broke or you know they're gonna have one one thousandth of the people that you signed to but that's your choice, you shouldn't have signed it. But we, I like that, I like that he said that. I also like that he's challenging a lot of people in the record industry. He's kind of wild, but every time he goes on a rant, it's like jam, 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 something wild, jam, jam, and then everybody ignores all the gems and just says, oh my God, he peed on the Grammy. Oh my God, he's so, he's so crazy. It's like, no, he's actually bringing a lot of things to the forefront that people need to pay attention to. So those are my two stories of the day. You could ask me more questions about either thing and I'll answer what I know and I'll hang out probably for like 30 minutes and then I'm gonna take off, to be honest, and go. I'm gonna go have a good day. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go do something fun. But um, appreciate you, Melissa. Thank you guys so much. I'll hang out for 20, 30 minutes. I actually have a friend on the way, so when he texts me that he's close, I'm, I'm gonna end this live stream and get ready. But until then, uh, I'll hang out and answer some questions. God bless you. Thank you, uh, Matthew from Buffalo. I appreciate you. And if y'all want, these hats are on dreamrare.com, okay? Dreamrare.com. Did I miss something? You missed a whole lot. You'll have to run it back or find it on YouTube. If you want to watch yesterday's live stream, it's on my YouTube channel and my BitChute channel. So BitChute is B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E, bitchute.com slash dreamrare. You can find my videos there. Instagram.com slash dreamrare. You can find some stuff there. YouTube, just search Anomaly, A-N-0-M-A-L-Y. You can find my live streams there that you don't see. I don't know, just, just search it and maybe you'll find it. Maybe you won't, but my videos, they, they're scattered around the internet. So it's like it's like a it's like an Easter egg hunt. It's like, where did that live stream go? Is it on Facebook? Is it on Instagram? Is it on BitChute? I bet you can find it somewhere if you look hard enough. That's all I'm gonna say. What do I think about Joe Rogan pushing drug use? Um, you know, I think everybody has the right to do what they 
do. If that's what Joe does, I think that's okay. But, you know, I have my disagreements with Joe, but I try to not judge people harshly. You know, I try to treat others the way I want to be treated. So if Joe wants to smoke weed and talk about, you know, psychedelics, I think that's his First Amendment right to do so. And it's my First Amendment right to say what I feel. But, you know, I'm not going to sit here and pick apart Joe for the things I disagree with. That's not what I'm here to do. I don't, I don't like to harshly you know, meanly judge somebody's character. But when you have a big influence, you know, you got to think about what you say. But it's also tough because if you're a human being, say you drink alcohol five times a week, what are you going to lie to people and say you don't? You know, so I, I have a little bit of compassion and sympathy for him there. But my, you know, my compassion and sympathy runs out when you leave the shithole third world country city that's declining because of Democrats and bring your Democrat policy somewhere else to destroy a whole nother state let that let them censor right wingers not say anything about it pretty much lie about it or cover it up and then apologize to the left wing media this can't happen so i'm not going to pick apart his personality or his habits or what he talks about that's not what i'm here to do i have much love for anybody going through anything that talks about what they do in real life but you know as far as as far as trying to turn texas blue and apologize to liberals instead of apologizing to to, to your own you know, podcast guests that you censored, this is, this is why we lose. We can't have our free speech warriors not defending free speech or selling it out for a paycheck. So that's where I, that's where I have my disgraces. Has anyone else been pushed for mail-in bo uh, voting? My friend from New Jersey sent me uh, something he got in the mail. Governor Murphy of New Jersey is trying to make everybody vote from home. I, I, I read it and it said, everybody needs to vote from home. He's giving mail-in ballots to everybody and forcing them to vote from home. So this is the lie of the liberal media and the left-wing media is they say, well, no, uh, no, this is what we've always done. It's safe. This is not what we've always done. In the past, if you want to vote from home, in certain states you can vote from home, but you have to request a ballot and then you get a ballot. There's never been a situation where they try to stop people from going in person and give everybody a ballot. That's how you cheat. Ballot harvesting, filling out somebody else's ballot. So there is huge cheating going on. But this is a coup attempt. I don't care what they say anymore. Fact check me, censor me, debate me. Do whatever you want, devils. This is what's going on. The tech companies, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, they're all working hand in hand with the Democrats to rig this election. So they fact check you and say, oh, this is a false. The experts have said that it's not a cheat. Which experts? The one that said that the ice caps were going to be melted by 2020 and they had to remove the signs from the National Glacier Park? The experts that said we'd be underwater in the 2000s? Which experts? Which one of the 10,000 experts that have been lying all over? Is it Paul Krugman, the uh, unhinged economic guy who hates Trump, who said that the uh, that the internet would be no more revolutionary than the fax machine, his, his great insight. When I was 10 years old, I knew the internet was gonna change the world, and Paul Krugman was saying that the fax machine was you know, no different than the internet. It's like, which one of these experts? So they're, they're trying to coup the president of the United States, and all the tech companies are in on it. So they are doing something differently in multiple states. They're stopping people from voting in person. They're giving everybody a mail-in ballot. This has never been done before. This has never been tried. This is totally different. This is totally ripe for rigging an election. And then not only are they doing it, but then Mark Zuckerberg and, and Jack Dorsey and all these people who run the tech companies are actively trying to censor everybody and fact check people. This is social engineering, 1984 style coup. Suck it, devils. I don't care anymore. You're demons and devils. And I'm on to you. And so is everyone else. So keep lying. Keep rigging. Keep deceiving the people. Keep spreading evil. Keep sitting in your room at night knowing you're a big liar. You can sit with all your money lying, 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 sweating. Devils. Liars. Not only do they lie, but then they try to stop people from telling the truth. You have your First Amendment right to lie. Keep lying. But you don't have the right to socially engineer humanity and fact check and censor and destroy and take freedom away from people who are more honest and more accurate than you. You don't have that God-given right. So shame on you, demons. 
Someone said, you're right, Anomaly, I've received three mail-in ballot requests, yet they're rigging the election. And then when Trump says that they're rigging the election, they say, well, it's not true, we've done mail-in ballot. They've never done it like this. That's a lie. Fact check, you're wrong. Fact check, you're a devil. Fact check, you've never said you can't do voting in person and you can only vote from home and we're gonna give ballots to everybody. That's never happened. You give a ballot to someone who requested it. You don't shut down the, the in-person polls and give ballots to everybody else, you demons. Fact check yourself, devil. Are you a devil? Fact check, true. Are you working for Lucifer? Fact check, mixed review. Could be true, could be false. Snopes. I'm tired of these demons. And they're gonna, and they're gonna challenge the election. And I know this because they already said it. Podesta already said he's challenging the election. These people are bragging about it in mainstream media. Even if he wins, he didn't win. Wait for three weeks so we could find more ballots. Do this, do that. Even if it happens, they're trying to coup the president of the United States. They've tried three times already. First time, failed. Second time, failed. Third time, failed. They did it sneakily. They did it covertly. And now they're throwing all their chips on the table to bring, it, bring the house down. So uh, Trump knows what's going on. Bill Barr knows what's going on. Half the country knows what's going on. Bring it on. Someone said we could take care of that by voting in person. For sure, but in certain states, they're not going to allow people to vote in person. That's all I'm saying. In certain states, they're saying, uh, you can't vote in person. We're gonna try to make you not vote in person. You have to vote from home. Everybody's gonna vote from home and everybody's gonna get a ballot. This has never been done before. And then the demon fact checkers on all these social media websites are like, no, we've always done this. You've never done this. This is not, this is not something we've always done. COVID, COVID-19 has always been here. We've always done mail-in ballots like to the max extent. No, you haven't. It's never, hap it's never happened like this. This is totally different on every level. And all they do is lie. It's insane. And then they rig people who tell the truth. I'm so tired of these devils. Repent, demon. Stand back. Hit you over the head with, with, a, with a Bible. And that's a Bible thumper for you. Will you be moving your videos to rumble like other conservatives who are being demonetized? I don't know what you mean by that, but I will say as a consumer, obviously, you know, I'm on Facebook a lot and I appreciate you, but I, I use BitChute more than I use YouTube. I don't watch YouTube that much anymore because all my favorite people got kicked off of YouTube. So now I watch uh, BitChute more, BitChute.com, B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E. And the demons and the devils are trying to shut down BitChute. They call it... A far right wing website, it's not, it's a free speech website. It's a speech, it's a bipartisan website where anybody can upload their stuff and they wanna stand up for the first amendment. They're not right wing, it just so happens that a lot of right wingers use it because right wingers are getting censored. And it's far right because these are the people you're banning. So when you have a free speech bipartisan platform, it seems to be right wingers who use it more because they're getting censored more. It's not rocket scientists. These demons not only won't let you speak the truth on their website, not only censor you, not only lie about you, not only rig stuff against you on all their platforms, but then they try to go to these other platforms and destroy them. Go at their web hosting, go at them in the media, You know, go at individual users who are kicked off YouTube on there. These are devils, folks. Repent. All right, let me take a sip. BitChute is allowing a platform for people who've been kicked off and they're getting attacked from every angle. They want to shut down any social media that they don't control. So people say, make your own. People do make their own. BitChute is the best alternative to YouTube that we've ever seen. And they're all, all these groups are trying to take it down. I could go through which groups are doing it. I just don't feel like it right now. Let's talk about something else. Let's answer some more questions. Someone said, how does Trump counter the corruption of mail-in ballots? It's a good question. He's trying. He's trying to fight it in court. A lot of the stuff they've been doing this, this year is unconstitutional. They can't shut a church down. That's unconstitutional. They can't shut society down. That's unconstitutional. They can't shut your business down and keep United Airlines open. That's unconstitutional. 
They can't shut a church down, shut your business down, keep the airlines open and keep the casinos open. This is all unconstitutional. Everybody should be fighting it in court. Bill Barr's fighting it, Trump is fighting it, they're working on it, uh, lawyers are on it. But uh, in general, every, every business owner should have been doing this. I don't know why like five business owners did this and then millions of business owners just took it and just sat there and watched their whole business get destroyed. You should have been in court. Everybody should have been in court. None of this stands up in most courts, but nobody has the oomph to fight it. And that's why I'm talking to Joe Rogan. I like Joe Rogan, but if you're gonna take $100 million, move to a red state, and then just start pushing progressive values, say it was population and bowing down to left-wing media, you're not helping the culture. You're just siphoning in all these people and you're like, ooh, I'm woke and intellectual. And then you bow down to the left, you censor the right, and then make excuses for why your failed policies won't fail one time when they fail every time because it's a failed mindset. So I get, he knows it. Joe's not a dumb guy, he knows it. He's afraid of the left-wing media. Rightfully so, There's, they're frightening. You know, they destroy anybody who questions them. And Joe Rogan questions them all the time because somewhere in his soul, he knows that it's the right thing to do is tell the truth. But he sees what they do to people who tell the truth. I get why he's hesitant to do it, but we can't back down. We can't have our best people backing down and cowering to the left wing media and censoring the right wing. And that's what almost everyone's doing. All of your heroes, whether they're Joe Rogan or right wing, they bow down to the media. Elon Musk doesn't bow down, Trump doesn't bow down, very few people don't. It's, you know, I, and everyone has their flaws. I'm just saying we can't, this is unsustainable. I could sit here and act like it's sustainable, but you can't bring a failed policy to Texas after it just destroyed an entire city and it's on its way to destroying an entire state. Keep it to yourself, bro, or, or, or learn and, 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 and rearrange and stop bowing. To, to the wrong people and stop censoring the right people. That's not right. Someone said, please don't move to Florida if you're a crazy liberal. If you move from New York or California to Texas or Florida because you wanna move to a red state, the least you could do is not bring your stupid views there. And I don't, I want discussion and debate, but I left a blue city for a red city. It's better, it's cleaner, it's safer, it's nicer. In every measurable way, it's better, literally. And it's not even super more expensive. It's like the same or less, to be honest, in certain areas. So I don't go running around my new red city and being like, ooh, I'm like Bernie Sanders still. He posted a Trump. This is another thing that he did that was super low. It's like, dude, I'm tired of these demons. Uh, Rogan posted a, a picture of Trump because Trump said, I'll go on Joe Rogan's podcast. I'll debate Biden for five hours. So Joe had the president of the United States agree to go on his podcast and debate for four hours. That's amazing. He should be complimented, right? Joe Rogan posts it and then posts a, a, a song quote about the devil, suggesting that Trump's the devil. So Trump goes out of his way as the president to say, I'll go on your podcast. And Joe thanks him by calling Trump the devil, he puts a quote and saying the devil came down the highway dressed in a suit, trying to tell people, hey guys, oh, I'm having Trump on my podcast, but I think he's the devil. Just so, just please don't yell at me, left-wing media. He's a coward and a liar, censoring right-wingers on your podcast, moving to a red area with progressive policies, and then calling the president of the United States, who's a thousand times the man and leader that he could ever be, the devil. That's how you thank the president for coming on your podcast, calling him a devil. These people are unbelievable. I'm so tired of these liars. It's like, it's not cool, it's not woke, it's not free speech, it's not counterculture, it's not anti-politically correctness. It's bowing down to all the left. Please don't hurt me, I'll lie with you, I'll make fun of Trump, whatever I have to do, even if he reaches out to me, just stop. It's so annoying. Go to his Instagram and look at the post where he posted Trump coming on his podcast. He basically called Trump the devil. It's like, it's, it's ridiculous. Judy, sorry to hear that. God bless you, Judy. I just read the comment. Someone said, if you move to another state and don't like the politics, don't bring it with you. Of course. If you leave a failed policy, leave that behind. Don't bring that and destroy your new state. 
This is what they do everywhere. He's like the king of that now. Yeah, he talks conservative sometimes, but he's like playing the fence and then censors conservatives. I'm tired of it. Or he lets Spotify do it. Uh, someone said, I'm deactivating my Facebook account each, each week for two days at a time after the election. I may just delete it altogether. Hopefully I can find you elsewhere. Hey, John, sign up to my free email list at stayintouchwithme.com. I have an Instagram, I have BitChute, I have YouTube, YouTube. So if you decide to leave, you can find me on all those platforms. But sign up to my free email list, stayintouchwithme.com. Excuse me. I have to sneeze. Hold on. Never mind. I thought I had to sneeze. I, there was some corona. Sorry. I said rereading 1984 and the thought police are in full effect. This is total 1984. War is freedom. Slavery is peace. True is false. Two plus two is five. This is all 1984. It's just as bad as the, the it was getting to that point. Now it's at that point. It's just as bad as 1984. We're living in it. These tech companies are it. So we need people calling this out. So I said lifelong Rogan. I've always, I've liked Rogan since I was 17 and 18. I still don't I don't I don't have this emotional hate for people as a person. It's just like stop lying, stop cowering to the devils, stop calling our president that when he, he when he literally reached out to you, you know? You, don't bring your failed policy to Texas. Texas needs I don't I just can't fathom it. It's like I left somewhere where I saw what the policies did. I'm not going to say Oh man, the reason I left Los Angeles, it's just too crowded. It's just too crowded. It's not too crowded. I moved somewhere that has a similar population and so do other people live all over the world in similar population areas in Los Angeles and there's dozens of cities and counties that are more safe, more clean, more nice, less homeless than Los Angeles. It has nothing to do with the population. Go to Tokyo and ask them, where's all the homelessness? Where's all the trash and crime? I don't understand. There's so many people here. It has nothing to do with population. Why would you leave a place knowing damn well it has nothing to do with how many people are there, move somewhere else, and then bring your failed ideas and lie about it because you don't want to seem too right wing. You're just a liar. Why wouldn't you be? It's like you move. I, I, I can't stand it anymore. It's beyond. It's like these everybody's just slowly whittling our country down to nothing. And I'm just supposed to sit here and act like it's okay. It's not okay. Tell the truth. And the more people who come to these people and demand the truth, then they'll tell the truth. They know they're lying. They don't want the backlash of telling the truth. But at a certain point, you're going to get it either way. We can't fiddle around anymore. So I'm going to read this. Someone said, I live in Idaho and it's starting to look like California because all the BS in Cali, they don't want to live with it, but they change Idaho. They're doing it all over the country. No question. And this is, I read a really good uh, post. I think it was from Columbia Bugle on Twitter. I love that guy. I don't know who it is because it's like an anonymous account, but Columbia Bugle, he said, for years, and this is true, I think conser older conservatives and, 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 and the baby boomer generation needs to hear this. Listen, I have to pre premise it with, I'm not a millennial blaming the boomers. It's all your fault, blah, blah, you know, it's the millennials, it's the boomers. I'm not saying that, but just listen to this because I think it's kind of true. He said that older conservatives, for decades, they just laughed when their kids were turning liberal and they just laughed and said, oh, they don't understand. They're gonna go out into the real world and they'll get it one day, but they were brainwashed. Everybody let their kids get brainwashed and then their kids went out into the real world, and now this is the real world that these millennials and younger generation created. So conservatives sat back and said, they'll get it one day. They didn't get it, they just took their failed ideas out to the real world and screwed up the real world. So now the real world is their world. Your world is gone. So this was the big flaw of the older boomer conservatives who are like, they'll get it one day in the real world. No, they're bringing their failed ideas that you let them get brainwashed with in school out into the real world. And this is happening all over the place. Like people don't pay attention to their kids. And I understand why in the 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s, the feminist movement and all these pseudo intellectual social movements that were brainwashing people into thinking families were bad and women have to go get a job, 
Back in the day, women used to watch the kids. You didn't let the government uh, run your kids. The woman watched the kids. And in some cases, maybe even the man was there to do it or vice versa, whatever. But you didn't just allow your kids to go off to these government schools and brainwash universities. You actually raised your kids. And then they convinced the women, well, no, you want to be in a cubicle. You, you belong in a cubicle for 40 hours a week. That's where you'll be the most happy. So then women started getting so empowered. And by empowerment, I mean leaving the house and leaving somewhere where they had more freedom and going to work for some 60-year-old guy 40 hours a week that they hated. And now you have nobody raising the kids because both parents are working. So where do you put the kid? You put the kid in school or you put the kid in college and you don't read his rubric because you're tired. You just work 50 hours a week to pay rent. And now your kids are brainwashed by the people you don't even know what they're teaching them. And now these kids are running the world. So this has all been like 100 years in the making. Destroy the family, separate the man and the woman, tell women they'll be happier with seven cats and orange hair when they're 65 instead of with a family. You know, tell them that they belong in the workplace instead of in the household. Uh, get them to, and, and this is, women always could work. I'm not saying you shouldn't and couldn't work. I'm just saying at a certain point, it was known like, hey, I should raise my kids instead of the government. And now it's like, hey, now I'll, I'll let the government raise my kids instead of me. So now you have a, a generation that was raised by government schooling and liberal Marxist indoctrination. And the conservatives said, oh, they'll get it when they get out into the real world. But they didn't ever get it. They just turned the real world into Marxism. And this was always the plan and this was always gonna happen. So I think the moral of the story is, please parents, think about this stuff. Think about what you're watching on television. Think about what you're watching on Netflix. Think about what you're doing, because what you're watching is like what you're eating. You're consuming it, and your kids are consuming it. And there's a reason that the 18 to 24 year old, they're lost, they're self-hating. They got the white kids hating themselves. They got the black kids feeling like they hate them, they hate them, I hate my skin color, I hate your skin color, it's your fault, it's my fault, I deserve this, I deserve nothing, you take all my stuff, I need all this. They've screwed up the mind of an entire generation. These people don't know how to think anymore. Up is down, down is up, I'm a woman, I'm a man. They've destroyed your kids because nobody raised their kids. Nobody cared what they were watching. I looked at my little brother's syllabus and it was propaganda. He went off to college and they filled him with four years of Marxist lies. So now he thinks like a Marxist. So this is what they do and nobody seems to care. I don't, I, I don't understand it. I get it. It's like everybody's busy, you know? It's not easy to raise a kid and work. I, could, I haven't done it, so I don't wanna judge, but it's like, please, for God's sake, raise your kids. Look at what they're doing or else you're gonna create a monster and then that monster's gonna destroy society and then you're not gonna have anywhere to run because America was the greatest country in the world and it's becoming very not the greatest country in the world. So now your ancestors and my ancestors and my grandfather and your grandfather who came here to escape poverty in Italy or poverty in Africa or poverty in, in Ireland or the famine, all that's gonna come here because that came there for a specific reason too. Bad leadership, bad management, bad economies, all these things that Marxists bring. By design, I read his book. So people gotta wake up. And unfortunately, the tragedy of the situation is people aren't gonna wake up until it's too late. And it's already getting to the point where it is kinda too late and people still don't care because it's still not that bad yet. But when it does get that bad, it's not gonna be anybody's fault but our fault for not raising our kids for not paying attention to what they were learning and allowing these social justice Marxist groups for the last hundred years to slowly wither away society, destroy the family, separate the man from the woman and separate the parent from the child and put them in the hands of a Marxist or a government. By design, they've been doing this for a hundred years. So we need to reverse this. Rant over. Someone said communism has killed more people than any other ideology in history. It's absolutely true, and they never teach how bad communism is because they won World War II. We worked with Russia. Who did we work with? We worked with Russia and other countries. What was Russia at the time? Who was Stalin? Stalin was a communist, so Stalin killed more people than Hitler. Before in World War I, before World War II, communists have been killing people for the last 100 years, from Mao, from Stalin, to the Bolshevik Revolution, Millions of people dead because of communism and they never taught you about it in school because the people who liked communism were running the schools. So they don't want to tell you it's bad. They're telling you it's good. Everything you've been taught was a lie. You're like Helen Keller was so great. Look her up. She supported the Bolshevik revolution that killed millions of people. 
Helen Keller supported it or whoever was teaching her supported it and told her to support it because I'm guessing she didn't learn it on her own. So everything you've ever learned was a lie because it's been written by communists and they want to do exactly what they did in other countries again. And the big lie that they never tell you is all the stuff that happened before World War II. They hone in on World War II and say, this is everything. Everything that ever happened is this. This is the only bad thing in the world and everything else is everything. It's like, no, before that, communists were killing millions of people in Russia. Communists killed millions of people during that same period. But they don't teach about that for a reason because they don't want you to know. And there's a reason that they call everybody they disagree with a fascist, a KKK, a Nazi. It's all a tactic to not get you to understand what's going on. And they've been doing this in America and all over the world for hundreds of years. Anybody who disagrees with us is this and that and this. It's all smear tactics. It's all deflection to make you look horrible and not realize that they're the weird, worst people in the country. I don't look good because I make other people look bad. I don't just say, everybody else is the KKK. I'm the best. Everybody else is a Nazi. Everybody else is the best. That wouldn't make me impressive. If I did that, you shouldn't watch me because then I have no value. My value comes in everything I said. I don't ever smear anybody's a racist. I just say, they're wrong. Here's why they're wrong. Not, I'm a better person than them and they're a bad person. I went, no, that's not how it works. So the people who do that, there's a reason they do that. They do it to cover up how horrible they are. Because even if you compare them to who they say you are, they're usually 20 times worse. So these are the games coming. This is why we can't play these games of, well, I'm gonna bow down to the left, I'm gonna censor right-wingers on my podcast, I'm gonna apologize for talking about Portland, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna pass these speech bills in Florida because you know anti-Semitism is real bad, so we gotta get rid of that free speech or do this, and then the tech companies do this, and then they, they censor for China, and the next thing you know, there's not a single person standing up for free speech, the right-wing selling out free speech, the left-wing selling out free speech, the free speech icon intellectual dark webs are selling out the free speech, You know your favorite Republicans are selling out the free speech, Obviously, the tech companies are selling out the free speech and censoring people for China. And then you have, we have nothing left because there's no one really fighting for free speech in this country. So we got to stop doing this. And we have to stop acting like these people have the moral high ground. Well, I don't want to be called a racist because these people... No, these people are communists. These people's ideology killed tens of millions of people. And my, best, my worst day is better than their best day. They're horrible, wicked people. They've just socially engineered society to always have the moral high ground. And they've been doing it for 100 years. And one of the way they do so not just through the media, but through the education system. That's why you don't learn about how many people communists kill. That's why you don't learn about how many people communists kill in World War I and in the Bolshevik Revolution, because if people understood that and who was doing it, people wouldn't want it to be like, damn, that's bad. But they, they teach your kids that communism's good. They were like, well, we were fighting them, so it's a good thing. They, this kids come out of school dumber than they went into school. You get all good grades, you come out of school, more brainwashed and less useful than when you went in school. You're spending money for some evil demon to fill your kid's head with evil thoughts and then they come out and parents just don't care. It's not, people gotta care. Someone will say, the problem is these people will place your employment and accuse you of racism and bigotry till you get fired. Yeah, but if they're gonna do that now, what do you think they're gonna do in five or 10 years? So that is bad, obviously. Getting fired's bad, being called a racist is bad. But at a certain point, who they're gonna call you it anyway. And if they get more systemic power, they're not just going to fire you, they're going to come after you. And I'm not saying that to scare people, I'm just like, historically, we're at, everybody can feel it. This is a crazy time. This is crazier than anything that's happened in the last 90 years. So what do you think happens in 10 years when they get more power? You're gonna wish that you made a stand when it was just your job. And here's the thing, for someone like me or a Rogan, Rogan already has way more money than me. He got a hundred million dollars, that's awesome. But it's like, if Joe Rogan can't stand up to these people with money and the power to do so, how is the average worker gonna stand up for somebody? They're not. So at a certain point on a low level and a high level, People have to be more brave, because to be honest, for me, it's really not that hard. I understand for Joe it's harder because the media attacks him with everything he does. It's very hard, it's very strenuous. The media is very evil, and they attack Joe anytime he does anything honest or nice. So I get it's hard, and I have great sympathy for him for that. It's not easy. 
But if, if people can't do it with money and people can't do it with no money, no one can do it. And if no one can do it, they just take and take and take and gain power and gain power. And the, 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 the effects of that, the negative effects of that in 10 years are gonna be a lot worse than it is now. So unfortunately, at a certain point, people are gonna to have to do something, at least a little bit, and it's, you just don't see it that often. No, they go after Rogan every other week because he's not a total liar. Like his podcast is more open than any left-wing podcast in the world. That's why they hate Joe Rogan. They don't hate Joe Rogan because he made a mistake. They hate Joe Rogan because he's a progressive Bernie guy who secretly knows he's not a progressive Bernie guy and he secretly knows he's conservative, but he doesn't want to say so because they'll rip his head off. I feel bad for Joe. I seriously do. He knows he's more conservative. He knows who's supporting the Second Amendment. He knows that li liberals don't, don't, don't uh, actually make sense, but he doesn't want to say that because he'll get his head ripped off. It's the same with people like Jimmy Dore. Jimmy Dore is a really honest progressive. I think somewhere in his head, he probably realizes that a lot of the policies he's pushing are not really going to work. And there's not a single left-wing leader that is uh, uh, able to pull it off and make it work and make it not turn catastrophic. I think he knows that. But when your entire life is left-wing progressive, you can't really jump out of that bubble. So the best you could do is like, I'm, I'll say this, but then I'll go back to here. I'll say this, I'll keep it real, but then I'll go back to here. And I think that's what you know people like Jimmy and Joe do, where it's like Joe knows, but he knows if he goes full truth, they're gonna slice his, you know, they're gonna come for him. Not literally, but just like, you know, metaphorically, media-wise. So he's like, here's the truth, but I like Bernie Sanders. Here's the truth, but I want, you. like, he knows that's not the right thing to do. But my thing is, if you leave, if you leave a left-wing state to do it, you, you owe it to your new state. To me, it's like I'm a warrior of my new red area. I'm voting all Republican, and I'm going to make sure this area never turns full liberal. And I'm going to try to flip the whole state red. So I'm not moving to a red area with a Bernie Sanders hat telling everybody about universal health care. Then I would expect people to hate me. This is why hate speech is such a lie, too. It's like, oh, my God, it's hate speech. It's like, well, why do people hate you? Sometimes people are hateful. People hate Trump. People hate this, people hate that. I'm sure some people hate me, but it's, it's not illegal to hate somebody. So if a group is getting hated by you know, a majority of society, maybe you're doing something that people hate. I'm not a hateful person, but other people are. So it's like, well, we need to stop people from saying this. You wanna stop people from saying the truth because they've noticed you know, statistically in certain areas and certain groups, you're doing a disproportionate amount of evil. So the fact that hate speech and hate crime People hate you for a reason. I don't hate, but I know why they hate you. So it's like you can burn, uh, you know, you can burn an American flag, and basically nothing will happen. You burn a gay flag; it's a hate crime, and you go to jail for a few years. A hate crime is a made-up term. It's a it's a political term to say, if you do this crime, it's okay. If you do this crime, five years of jail. A crime is a crime. If you burn a flag into somebody else's, that's property damage. If you burn your own. It is what it is, the courts can decide. You know, if you commit a crime against somebody and you attack somebody, that's a crime. If you do it for a political reason or something, that's one thing, but hate crime and hate speech, these are just made up terms to stop people from realizing what's going on. It's like, it's not illegal to not like something. They wanna make it illegal to not like something because the world's most wicked people don't want you to not like them. They wanna make it illegal for you to not like them as they push and push and push and push. And you see this not just with hate speech, you see this with tech companies. They hate the truth, so now they censor the truth. They say the truth is uh, questionable that needs to be calculated by the fact checkers and the daily. It's like, it's all a lie. These people just don't like the truth. So that's why I don't subscribe to the word hate speech. I don't subscribe to any of the hate speech words that they use to censor society. You never hear me say these words. Racist, sexist, xenophobic, anti-Semitic climate denier. These are not real words. You could have an intellectual discussion about the changing of the climate, but that's a broad term. Climate change? Yeah, climate change. Winter, spring, summer, fall. Climate change? Today, tomorrow, different weather? Climate change. Rain, snow? Climate change. This is going up? Climate change. This is going down? Climate change. That's melting? Climate change. That's growing? Climate. It's a broad word that means everything, and then they say you're a denier. Nobody is a denier of climate change. There's just intellectual discussion about how much is the climate changing? How, how big are the storms gonna get? How high is the ocean gonna go? 
How big are the caps going to be? How big is the melt going to be? Why do you think that? They don't know. This is a settled science. They've been wrong about every prediction they've ever made when it comes to climate change. They called the Jacob Shabin Glacier the world's fastest melting glacier, or now the world's fastest moving glacier, because it's not melting, it's been growing for three years. So it grows for three years, and they still call it the world's fastest melting glacier and try to put out headlines to convince you not to question it. It can't be melting that fast if it's growing for three years. This, could you question it? Of course you can. There's no, there's, they've been wrong about every prediction they've ever made because they're liars. They hate critical thinking. They hate discussion. They hate anybody who questions their lies. So hate speech is a made up term. And every term from racist to climate denier to anti-vaxxer, they're all made up terms to discuss. Oh, you're an anti-vaxxer if you don't want the rush vaccine. What if you like every vaccine on the planet, but you don't want a vaccine that was rushed through safety trials? That doesn't make you anti-vaccine, it makes you pro-brain. That means you're smart. That means you have common sense and you're skeptical. That's what everybody should be. So they make up these terms to put you in a box. I'm not anti-pill, but I don't want most pills on the market. Does that make me anti-pill? No, because you could give me something at GNC or something off Amazon that I would take. That's a pill. I have a, you know, I have these mushroom pills, not like psychedelic mushrooms. I'm talking like lion's mane mushrooms. I take those pills. I'm not anti-pill, I just don't want 99% of your pharmacy pills. You wouldn't call me an anti-piller, so why would you call me an anti-vaxxer? Why would you call me a climate change denier? Why would you call me anti-Semitic when I believe in the First Amendment? Why would you call me racist when I'm doing half of what you're doing? Why would you call me sexist for trying to help women? These words don't mean anything, and that's what I'm writing my book about. I keep telling you I'm pumped up about it, uh, but that's what my book's gonna be about, all these words and how they mean absolutely everything and nothing at the same time. Let's go, folks. Someone said, Anomaly, you should be teaming up with J.P. Sears. I mean, that's a, lot of, that's a lot of good hair right there. Me and J.P. Sears, that might be too much good hair for humanity. You know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna go at the game that hard because you got his hair and my hair. That's, you know, that's a scary sight. We'll get censored right off the jump just for, just for, just for that alone, let alone what we say. But yeah, I'd love to talk to J.P. Sears. He's, he's a legend. That guy's hilarious. Sorry, I got some water here. I'm, I'm embarrassed, hold on. Hold on, I'm gonna put that right there though. Godblesshats.com. I gotta wipe some water off my face, but I gotta show off my hat though. Look at that, that's a good hat. Hold on, real quick. Look at that. American flag made in America. I got black hats coming, I got blue hats coming. You could wear it backwards and show off the American flag. You know what I'm saying? American flag, you could even wear it sideways, start a rap team, but I, I prefer that you just put it forward. The, the, the sideways thing's kind of had its day, but you get what I'm saying. Dreamer.com, GodBlessHats.com, black and blue hats coming, pink hats coming for the ladies. Come on, folks, they're not gonna stop us. Oh, but Anomaly, what happens if they take this? Then I'm just gonna sell more hats, guys. I don't care anymore. I'm selling more hats, and I'm not, you don't need to buy a hat, but I'm just saying, well, not only what if Facebook, then I'll sell more hats, folks, with American flags on it. I don't, I'm a hat salesman now. I'm not a hip hop artist. I'm not a news analyst. I'm a hat salesman who just sells hats. I'm just here trying, no, I'm just kidding. Someone said, I'll buy your book. I bought Terrence's book too. God bless Terrence. That's a good, that's a good guy. I like Terrence. I love the shirt. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I don't know where my shirts are, but you, you know, if you get it. It's on dreamrare.com, the anomaly shirt. It's my face on it and it says, have a good day. I don't wear it because I don't wanna wear my face on a shirt. I feel like that's a little weird, but maybe I'll wear it one time, I don't know. Um, am I gonna make beanies? I might make beanies eventually, but the thing is I can't do all these hats because I want it to be quality. Like you look at this hat, made in the USA. You know what I'm saying? This, this hat is a good hat. I can't sell a bad hat, so the the, the dish, distributor I'm using only has these hats. So I, I don't wanna sell a cheap hat, I'm not selling you a mug from China. You know how bad I wanted to sell you guys a coffee mug, cause I'm always drinking coffee, but I refuse to sell a coffee mug from China. And it's no disrespect from China, but I want my mugs made in the USA, I, I'm just saying. And that's why I'm making a whole website with my friend, 
I can't tell you the name of it, but we're gonna we're gonna show you a web we're gonna give you a website an aggregate aggregator of all United States made products. So I'm you know I love my country and I refuse to sell a trucker hat from China. No disrespect to China. I'm just you know I have hats made in China and they're cheap. This is made, this is made in America. So I can't do beanies and trucker hats at this time. Maybe in the future. Thank you. Who said that? Oh, thank you, Henry. I appreciate you, Henry. When are the colored hats coming? Uh, I just ordered a white hat. The black and blue and pink hats are coming October 1st is when I'm planning on it. I feel like let's do a month and then we'll go that. So I have them here. I could show you, but you know, it's going to be backwards anyway, but they're coming next month. I mean, don't, don't stress it. It's good to have a white hat. It's good to have a black hat. So, you know, I personally bought 10. Seth Rogen does pottery. Listen, God bless pottery. We need we need potters out there. Unless you're talking about him smoking pot, but I don't know what you what you mean. But you know, someone has to do pottery. Put on your anomaly hat. This is my hat. This is the only hat I have. I don't have an anomaly hat. I just have other hats. All right. I'll answer a few more questions, then I gotta go. My friend's coming pretty soon. It's so hard to find products made in the USA. Everything on Amazon's made in China. Exactly. That's why my friends. That's why my friends came to me with a business proposal. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't turn down because I was on Amazon. I want to buy a broom. I gotta buy all this stuff for my house. But everything's made in China. Everything. There's like nothing made in the USA. So you come to my website next month. We'll probably be done mid October. And then my website's gonna be all USA products. I'm gonna try to have USA brooms, USA hats, USA trash cans, everything USA, made in the USA. That's what the whole website's gonna be. I'm working on it. It's, it's a, and it's not even gonna be, it's not, I mean, maybe it'll turn into something, but it's, it's a service for the people and hopefully a successful business model. But I don't even care. I just want a website where you can buy all USA stuff. We'll make, tens of thousands of sales in the USA, and then we'll bring manufacturing back home. I'm not just gonna sit and leave Trump out there to try to bring America back himself. He's trying his best. Everyone says, Anomaly, don't disagree with Trump. Anomaly, don't call him out. Anomaly, don't disagree with him. Listen, he needs our help. We can't just ride his coattail and jump on Trump's back and think he's gonna save America. We need to save America. I'm knocking things over. We need to help him. We, we need on all levels to, Increase what he's doing because Bill Bill Barr is in over his head, man. These these demons are incredible. So I'm out here trying to help Trump on the front lines. I can't just sit and watch him, you know, get get surrounded by these swamp creatures. Excuse me. Sorry, I got a little worked up. I get excited, but it's okay. Whew. Someone said that's awesome. You have such a conviction for U.S. products. Listen. If I launch a business, it's gonna, it's gonna be right. And if it's not, then I'll just go bankrupt, but it's okay. Trump did that too. Anybody could go bankrupt. Once, once in a while is okay. So I said, I'll shop at your site. Yeah, it, and it's not even gonna be like a full-fledged site. Like, it, it's gonna lead you to the places that you could buy in the USA. So it's gonna probably lead you off the site at first, but that's okay. All right, calm down, calm down. So I said, I have USA made socks and I have USA feet. God bless, Brad's got the so his feet are made in the USA, it's important. Let me see, it says Steven Crowder sells mugs but he has to order them from China, but then he has them painted in the USA. He can't find a mug ma manufacturer in the USA. That's what I'm saying. How crazy is it that you can't find a mug factory in the USA? If all else fails, I'll start being the first mug manufacturer in the USA. I have no problem with that. If anybody knows how to make mugs in the USA, Email me and we'll do it together, okay? Um, I, I, I want, I, I, that's a problem. There needs to be, how hard is it to make a mug? I used to make them in pottery class. With, like, I used to make my own mug. I made a mug when I was in third grade. We can't make mugs in the USA anymore. See, and everybody just waits for Trump to do it. They're like, Trump's gonna save us from the deep state. You have to save yourself from the deep state. Trump can't make a mug, he's busy. We have to make mugs. Why is no one making mugs in the US? I don't get it. That's why I'm selling these hats. Because these are made in the USA. How many hats are made in the USA now? Probably not many. It's so sad. We can't do anything anymore. Our kids go out to school and they come back more brainwashed than they went. And they can't even make a mug or a hat in this country anymore. They're like, we buy from China. It's like, buy from here. 
make it. Okay, I'm done. I'm sorry. Get back. We'll get back to the, the basics. We get our mugs from England at least. That's fine, but listen, 1776 will commence again if we can't make our own mugs. I love England. You know, you, London, God bless you. Manchester, God bless you. But I didn't... I didn't go through the American Revolution to get my mugs from England. And that's no disrespect to England. But 1776 will commence again if America can't make our own mugs. We did the Boston Tea Party, but we can't make a mug in this country. We have to make mugs American again. Come on. We didn't, we didn't go through the American Revolution to buy our mugs from England. Disgraceful. Who's the distributors you use? We make our hats for our business and I want them in the USA. Heisel, you could, uh, e if you email me, I'll, I'll have that conversation with you, I'll tell you. Just, e just send me an email, say Anomaly, it's, it's Heisel. Where, where do you get your hats from? And I'll tell you. We need a kid's bill of rights for our school. Yeah, the te teacher unions have gone insane. Unions are were a good idea, but they're getting too crazy. You know, they need to be rearranged in some sort. Let's see. Someone said people make USA mugs, but not at the scale China does. We'll, we'll scale it out then. What do I think about the central bank and the monetary system? Uh, it's a good question. The, what's interesting is, I'll, I'll say this, because this is even more interesting than that, but what do I think about the central bank? I think Lenin said, Vladimir Lenin, who was one of the fathers of communism, I believe he founded the Communist Party, you know, that's why people say Marxist, Leninist, but Vladimir Lenin said essentially 90% of communizing a nation is putting a central bank. Karl Marx and Vladimir Lenin were obsessed with central banks because once you have a central bank, that means all the money comes from one place, centralized. What does that mean? It means that you don't own your country anymore. So once we, once we had a central bank in 1918, we were already on our way to communism, even though America wasn't communist. Once you control the money, you control everything else. So I can't say I'm a huge fan of a central bank because I think it was a mistake. Uh, and interesting enough, I don't know enough about this to tell you it's true or false, but I will say this. Everybody knows the Titanic. This is how they use movies to brainwash you guys. And use movies, they tell you history, but then they tell you what they want you to know about history. So how many people have read you know, uh, the books of everybody involved in World War One and World War Two. How many people have read, you know, the, you know, the Communist Manifesto? Probably not very many. But how many people have seen movies about World War Two and World War One? And that's what they know about World War Two and World War One. So with, with the Titanic, I've seen the Titanic. It's a great movie. Leonardo DiCaprio, the lady, I forget her name. You know what I'm saying? The old people. It's a good time, the Titanic. But most people don't know, and I've heard that, people who opposed the central bank and who, who were really challenging the banking system that they were trying to go with were on the Titanic. And a lot of people seem to think that, you know, the Titanic crashed and then the opposition for the central banks was disappeared. I can't confirm that because I haven't looked into it enough to really, uh, you know, fully research it. So I'm being honest about it, but no one's even heard that. 99% of people only know Leonardo DiCaprio. There's a bigger story when it comes to the Titanic, but they never teach you that. So they teach you the story and then they mold it in a, in a romantic way that they wanna mold it so you never realize what actually happened in this country. So everything's like that. World War I, World War II. All these movies are scripts written by somebody. Who wrote it? How honest are they? Look at who hates Trump the most. Who hates Trump the most? The media hates Trump the most. Celebrities hate Trump the most. Uh, you, you get what I'm saying? Um, script writers hate Trump the most. Judd Apatow hates Trump the most. Who killed Abraham Lincoln? It, sorry. Who killed Abraham Lincoln? It was an actor. So a lot of the people who hate Trump the most are the people who are writing all these scripts. If they can't tell the truth about today, 
Do you think they're telling the truth about yesterday or two years ago or five years ago or 20? They're not, they're lying. <laughs> so, you know, unfortunately, I think people have been duped and deceived by the television, the movie industry, and people watch movies more than they read. So they now control your history or your false understanding of it. All right, I'm gonna, I gotta go in like two minutes, three minutes, so let's make it good. Someone said you're right about the Titanic. Listen, I'm not out here, I'm not gonna be out here lying to people, I'm just saying, I don't know enough about it to explain it, but enough to know that there's a bigger story there. That's all I'm saying. So I said the rectangle water bottle would sell. Well, it's, it's not. That's not a water bottle. That's a. That's a glass. It's a glass bottle. I guess it technically is a bottle. Yeah, I don't know. I I can't remember where I got it, but. All right, two more minutes, maybe two more questions, then I'm out. This was fun, I appreciate it. And if you wanna watch my live stream from yesterday, it's on it's on, Faith, it's on YouTube and it's on BitChute. And that's where they go. I usually leave them up for like 12 to 24 hours, and then I take them down, and then I put them on YouTube and BitChute, and they stay there forever, or until they d delete them. Let's see. Imagine if Hillary would have won. Yeah, that's that's a bad time. Someone said the left is showing maybe the McCarthy hearings had a point. Um, yeah, I wanna, uh, where's my, is my book here? I don't know where it is. I put them all on the shelf. But um, in the book, Color, Communism, and Common Sense, Manning Johnson actually referred to McCarthy. So a lot of things in history, yeah, you know, they've, they've made McCarthyism. You learn about McCarthyism in school, right? What do they teach you? McCarthy was crazy. McCarthy was wrong. McCarthy got called out and they turned his name into a verb, McCarthyism or, or a, you know, I don't know, adjective. I, I got to think of what type of word it is, but McCarthyism, they've turned it into a lie or falsely accusing somebody. Was he really wrong? I mean, once Vladimir Lenin said, once you have a central bank, it's 90% 90 90 of communizing a nation. And Manning Johnson wrote a book part of the Communist Party. He worked for the Communist Party in this country covertly for years, wrote a book about it, and said that McCarthy was right. This was a black communist turned, you know, conservative Christian, or Christian communist turned conservative Christian. So, yeah, I mean, I think people people would do themselves a huge service relearning history. Um, and even a lot of conservatives I follow, most people only know little talking points. You know, it's like, oh, the Democrats were the KKK. It's like, True, they, I think they were kind of, uh, you know, History Channel even says that they were, you know, behind it because if you look, who did black people work for? Black people worked for the Republican Party since 1870. So it only makes sense if Democrats weren't working with black people until like the 1990s and Republicans were always the party of black America, it would make sense that the Democrats were the KKK. But the point I'm getting to is there's a lot of stuff like that in history that a lot of people just say, because it's like ingrained in their head. If they told you McCarthyism was a, was a word to mean fake, but maybe it wasn't. Like, think about all the other words that you just call people and use that you just demonize them with, but you don't even know the true origin of how they started, who they were, who they were up against, how they got there. These are important things. Even if somebody, like, uh, I'm going to go in a minute, but just to wrap it up. In America, say America has a problem in five years and our and empire collapses. I hope it doesn't happen. I don't think it's going to happen. But if it does, it's important to understand how do we get to this part in America. You have to go through the 40s, 50s, the 60s, all the mistakes that your people made, that your country made, that your ethnicity made, that your religion made. You have to understand all the mistakes that led up to the bad event. When they teach all these wars and all these evil things that happen, they don't teach you the 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 years that led up to it and why it happened and how it got to that point. Because if you learn how it got to that point, you'd be able to correct it and stop it so it wouldn't repeat itself. So the whole narrative has been wrong and 95% of people believe the lie 
because they don't understand how it happened. Even if you don't like that person, how did they get there? If they were so bad, how did they get in power? What allowed them to get in power? Was it just evil people doing evil things? Or was it evil people doing evil things and then bad mistakes? And then there's so much stuff people don't know. So it's like they just hone in on one part and just scream and call everybody names, but people haven't really learned how it happened and what allowed it to get happen. And there's gaping holes in history that they just don't teach that are like huge. It literally puts everything into context. It literally makes things make sense a hundred times more, but I never learned it in school. I never learned it in history class. They, te they don't teach it. So you gotta almost learn it on your own, uh, unfortunately, because that's, that's where the education system is at. But I gotta go. God bless you guys. God bless your family. God bless America and God bless the world. Have a beautiful day and I'll be back soon. If you want to get the hat I got, it's at GodBlessHats.com. It's made in the United States of America. And, you know, it is what it is. If you don't want a hat, sign up to my free email list at StayInTouchWithMe.com. I also have shirts on there for people who don't like hats. Uh, the shirts are, have my face on it. Very annoying. No, I'm just kidding. And then uh, it says, have a good day. It's a good time. I enjoy it. People seem to like it. So if, uh, if you want one of those, let me know. And also, if your shirt hasn't come or your hat hasn't come, I'm working on it. There's four that got stuck since like uh, August 30th out of hundreds. I'm working on those. You're, you're all good. If anything ever goes wrong with the hats or shirts, email me one person out of like literally a lot. Uh, there was like sem a semi problem and I just gave them three times as much money. They spent like 12, 15 bucks or something. I gave them 30 or 40. So it's like, you're gonna get your money. You're gonna profit. You're gonna make more money than you had if there's a mistake. So just let me know, just email me and I'll, I'll get it all done. I apologize for the delay. Two reasons, one got stuck because of the designs in, in uh, late August. But also a, a problem has been, not a problem, but they're taking longer than normal because of COVID. All these companies are like, well, COVID, we're just going to go slower. So sometimes they get fulfilled within a day. Sometimes they get fulfilled within a week. I can't control it. I think they're starting to speed up because the COVID thing is starting to disappear. But uh, that's why the delays. Almost everybody, it's been 100% easy. But for the ones who aren't, just feel free to email the email address that you ordered under if you have a problem. And I personally handle it. But I, it's been a 99% success rate. There's been like one or two slight problems. One guy, I switched his address. I'm out here doing all this stuff, but you get it. All right, just let me know. Have a good day, guys. I'll be back.